Welcome to the Innova Buzz podcast, where our job is to help you build visibility, professional credibility, and connection with your ideal client by putting the human at the center of innovative marketing so you can build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship with your ideal clients. I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm honored that you're here with me. If you haven't joined our wonderful marketing transformation community yet, go to innovabiz.co and collect your free gift as well. Do subscribe to the show and also leave a review because it helps others find us. Let's get into today's masterclass on this InnovaBuzz podcast. Positive thinking will not change your life. Inevitability thinking is the most powerful form of thinking and advanced thinking in the personal development field is exactly what it says, the name, inevitability thinking. is anything you want. It's inevitable. It's a foregone conclusion because you have set conditions along the way for it to happen. Welcome back. I hope you've had an awesome week so far. If you haven't yet listened to my recent conversations with Systems Rock founder, Natasha Vorompiova, and with the author of The Attention Factor, Alice Aspen March, then do check them out after you've listened to today's conversation. I'm really excited to have on the Innova Buzz podcast as my guest today, Roger Salem. He's the founder and chairman of the Winner's Circle, the largest and most respected mastermind forum for top speakers and information and internet marketers. Roger is also an award-winning inspirational speaker, a best-selling author of several books and courses on personal development, on sales and marketing, and on real estate investing. For most of the 1990s, Roger served as a professional speaker and trainer with the world-renowned motivational speaker and peak performance coach Tony Robbins. Roger believes that if you want to achieve more success from your business and personal goals, then the key is to surround yourself with other top achievers. In our discussion today, Roger talked to me about how to run a mastermind using structure, processes and boundaries to enable breakthroughs to happen. He explained the importance of focusing first on relationship capital And he explained to me about inevitability thinking as a means to get what you want. Without further ado then, let's fly into the hive and get the buzz from Roger Salem. Hi, I'm your host Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz and I'm really excited to welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast today from Salt Lake City in Utah in the USA, Roger Salam, who is a best-selling author. He's a speaker, a trainer, and founder of the Winner's Circle International. Welcome to the Innova Buzz podcast, Roger. It's a real privilege to have you here as my guest. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and a privilege. Neil Sperling, who was our guest on our last milestone, or our last before the last milestone, episode 200 of the Innova Buzz podcast, suggested that we have a conversation with you, Roger. So a big hello to Neil. I know he listens in regularly and um, provides feedback on some of the episodes. So I hope we do do you justice today, Neil. No, thank you. And Neil is an awesome guy. Yeah. I spoke, I spoke to him a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll say hello next time you do speak to him directly. I've, it's probably been a month or so since I spoke with him. Now, Roger, you, um, you've had an interesting journey, an interesting background. You were taken on as, as an employee of Tony Robbins very early in, in your career. Um, you ended up becoming one of the top salespeople and, and a lead trainer in the Tony Robbins organization. Now, people can find out a lot more about you by listening to other podcast interviews. You've done quite a few. I didn't think it was worth repeating a lot of that. Um, so I encourage the listener to go and check you out there. But what 
you do today is run global masterminds and help entrepreneurs really accelerate their growth and surround themselves with outstanding people. And that, that was what I wanted to explore with you a little bit today. But of course, anything relevant from your background, I'd love you to share as well with us. So let's start with a question of, uh, you know, why, why did you start these masterminds? Wonderful. And in a way that the genesis of that goes back to Tony Robbins in the sense that I'm a student of success. And Robbins Research International, what Tony's core competency was that he would study successful people and then that's what he passed on. And I would go to companies and organizations and study their successful people and model. And modeling is his quote unquote formula that anything you want in life, anything you want in life, find someone who's already achieved that and then model them if that's what you want. And there's a certain steps and things that you need to do, steps for modeling. And when I first, it was very early on in the late 80s after I graduated from UCLA, after my first job is when I saw Tony Robbins. And when I saw him, it was, he resonated with me so much. He was so inspiring. And I say to myself that I want to master what he's teaching. I don't want to dabble in it. And I said, what better way to master than go work for him? He'll make sure I live it, otherwise he'll fire me. Yeah. So that is called total immersion learning. That is called inevitability thinking. This positive thinking will not change your life. Inevitability thinking is the most powerful form of thinking in, the, in advanced thinking in the personal development field. It's exactly what it says, the name, inevitability thinking. It's anything you want. It's inevitable. It's a foregone conclusion because you have set conditions along the way for it to happen. And so along that way, being a student of success, I'm always looking for the silver bullet. What is the fastest way to get to um, success? Because all else being equal, everybody wants to get there faster. Is there a faster way? All else being equal. And I'm here to tell you there are no silver bullets, mm. but the closest I've come is when I read Think and Grow Rich. And there's also another saying that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear. And I read it before in the 90s, but it didn't re resonate with me because I guess I wasn't ready for it. And I tell people that how many times you've listened to the same audio, audio uh, session or the, you read a book the second, third, or the 10th time and you found something completely new. Yeah. That, wasn't there the first time or the first 13th time. And you go, man, the author in the middle of the night added that chapter. Added it. <laughs> yeah. and I swear, I've listened to it 13 times. It wasn't there. On the 14th time, it's just glaring. Yeah, yeah. Or, it, or it, that was never expressed that way before. Now yeah, it makes that, total sense. Yeah. Yes. And so I say that the, the truth is, the person, is, the book is not different. You are different. Hmm. You have, you're looking at it, reading at it with different spectacles, different life experience. And so when I read it, I think 2000, mid 2000, and Napoleon, then I just studied that Napoleon Hill, who was a, sort of the grandfather of the whole personal development movement in 1900, 1903, Andrew Carnegie, the richest man in the world at the time, commissioned him to study the, all the successful people of his era and find out why are these people successful. So literally there was commission. And as a result of that study, and by the way, he gave him, he took $1 for that commission. <laughs> and, and, um, so, and as a result of that study, he developed 17 principles. Three of them are foundational principle and 14 are supporting principles. Foundational principle obviously means that they're found in everybody that he talked to, they had these three. And so right there, principle number one of the three foundational principles is definiteness of purpose, which is knowing what is it that you want, having clarity of your goal, your target. Because if you don't have clarity, if you don't know what you want, it doesn't matter. It's, it's like uh, in, in, in Dorothy, in, in, in the movie, when she's at the path and there's a fork in the road and she said, she's confused. I don't know which path to take. And all of a sudden, Poof, the fairy appears and said, hey, where do you want to, uh, which path shall I take? And she asked, where do you want to go? I don't know. 
then it, goes, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. So same thing. So the moment you know what is it that you want, principle number two is the principle, he called it the mastermind. Right there, I'm like, I am a, right in front of me. He's telling me that his, all of his research, he found that this is the, I call it the holy grail. And right then and there, I said, I need to master mastermind with the same intensity that I, I went and mastered by modeling. I said, I now need to master mastermind. And I started looking for mastermind. And by mastermind, the, the, the Napoleon Hill de definition of mastermind is the classic is when two or more people get together in the spirit of harmony and cooperation. either to achieve their individual or a collective outcome. When these two people or more people get together, there's a collective mind that forms, the collective wisdom, hence the mastermind. So mm. it will never happen, no matter how smart you are as an individual, this will never happen because if with an individual, there is no collective mind. So that is the foundation. And Napoleon Hill said, analyze the record of any successful person, either they have achieved great success or a moderate success. He said they either consciously or unconsciously applied the principle of mastermind. And he said, you know, great power can be achieved with no other principle but mastermind. And right then and there, I said, this is it. Now I need to dedicate to mastermind. And I started looking for all the mastermind organization that was out there at that point. And I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for there. All of them had good qualities since I couldn't find what I was looking for. And what I meant by that, I was specifically looking for an ROI centric mastermind, a business mastermind, not an idea centric mastermind. If you and I sit there, ideas are dime a dozen. Ideas will come because of the nature of the good people. I was wondering that what can I do that, that will move the needle of the ROI in a meaningful way. Since I couldn't find what I was looking for, I did the next best thing, I started my own. And, and mm. that's how the winner circle was born. And just blatantly speaking that when I am not very good at creating something brand new, but if you give me three, I will create a fourth one that is with eclectic from all the three and then add my own and it'll be very different and be far superior than the three by, by themselves. The old saying that if you copy from one, it's plagiarism. If you copy from 10, it's research. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what in school, what they call plagiarism in business life, we call it cooperation, we call it mastermind. And so it's, it's the, the dichotomy. And that's why, I, that's why I sometimes joke that my UCLA degree and 25 cents ought to get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> and here is that cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. And not from Starbucks, by the way. Yeah. We, we call it uh, four bucks. <laughs> four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> you can get out of, you can get the same coffee at a place for 50 cents. You go to Starbucks and you, you get a coffee for four bucks. So, <laughs> great. And, it's and, a new and, one for me. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard that before. Jürgen is, Anything good and great, anything good and great that has happened to my life is not an indirect, not an indirect. I can define the genesis is a direct, direct result of my mastermind or the other mastermind groups that I pay and belong to. Hmm. As a matter of fact, look at this, this connection. We came here because of Neil. How yeah. did Neil happen? Because Neil attended my mastermind at sea last year, hmm. exactly a year ago, the mastermind he attended and he, I have a testimonial from him that that was the most transformational seven days of his life. To so someone like his caliber telling me that, and to so when this group of people by invitation they come, I have to raise my game. Because this is not ordinary people that, oh, I can do some, I said something and they're gonna be impressed. They've been there, done that. I have to raise the game to impress them. And when they said that it was the most transformational week of his life, and we're here because of that, and because of that one connection. And so anything 
I can, I'm looking back, that has happened since 2006, 2007. I can go and almost without exception pinpoint that that connection came with, with the direct. And sometimes maybe it's, it's Neil, maybe two, two uh, three apart, but the genesis would be some mastermind event that I either are a speaking engagement that I, from a mastermind, I got a speaking engagement. And then from that speaking engagement came the next joint venture. Mm. So, and I don't know that your listeners, that if they have experienced mastermind, and sometimes, of course, I, I get interviewed um, many times about the topic, and I create global masterminds. If I want to give you the ABCs of mastermind very simply, and that why do you want, why should everyone join a mastermind? Forget about my mastermind, any mastermind, and just like, if not, create your own. And it's not challenging. It's A is for access. Access to other successful people. And that old cliche, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And here, when you're around the successful people, then B is for best practices. There's not enough time to, for us to make all the mistakes. So you uh, find out from other successful people what, how they have achieved their results and you shortcut, you accelerate. <clears throat> and C is for community of like-minded people. So it's very lonely out there as an entrepreneur. So if you uh, come together with a group of like-minded people, it's fun and you feel like you're not alone. These people can finish the sentences for you. I have had in my masterminds, people share things they haven't shared with their spouse, they haven't shared with their business partner, they haven't shared with their employees, because all of these people, it's a safe environment. And, and this, I can't talk about it, but with you guys, I can, because I, can, I know that you can relate to it. I haven't been able to come up with one word, but the closest I've come, if I had to explain what a mastermind is, I've come up with two words. Mastermind is accelerated results. Anything you want, chances are you can get it on your own without mastermind. But if you want the same thing faster, stronger, better, I promise you, you'll get it through the power of mastermind. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it brings to focus that, you know, we're, I guess, in some ways, you know, we're seeing through the COVID situation that, that uh, we do miss those social interactions and we are a social species. But as entrepreneurs, we kind of think of ourselves as problem solvers. So we want to solve all the problems ourselves and we, we don't reach out and ask for help, which uh, the mind mastermind gives that structure to, and as you said, a safe environment for where you can have those conversations, you can learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. Um, I think that's, that's always a, a great philosophy. Don't make other people's mistakes again. Um, yeah, the two foundational beliefs of my mastermind is number one, is who you associate with and listen to will determine your destiny. Who you associate with and listen to will determine your destiny. And number two is none of us is as smart as all of us. Yeah. So that's the collective mind that, has, that comes together to create the mastermind. And when, when they come together and in a broader sense, there's, Three main reasons you should join any mastermind. Number one is to solve problems. Like you're saying that we are entrepreneurs and we get paid for solving problems. Bigger the problem, bigger the reward. Solve problems. Two is share resources and find out new resources. And third is find new opportunities. Hmm. These are everything else. I can give you 39 reasons to yeah. join a mastermind, but they'll all be a subset of one of these three. And so... What I like about the true mastermind is that my masterminds are a dozen, 14, 15 people. It is not, you know, 25 people. I have done, I've tested. And if anything less than six, it's, there's not enough energy in the room to spark things. And if it goes more than 15 people, and if it's, then you have to go to a three-day format, not a two-day format. I usually do two-day format. So now you have a dozen people and you have two facilitators and to get these people and everybody, we need to focus 
on you. When it's your turn, it's not just you have five minutes and you say what you do and you know, you have full hour and I am outcome bound, not time bound. And I have buffer built in that if, if people, the whole learning of the mastermind comes vicariously to other person. So when you come to the mastermind, you come prepared with your, what your problem you're going to talk about, what opportunity you're going to share. But then you find out someone else's problem and you go, oh my God, I didn't even think about that one. Mm. I have that problem. I just wasn't aware. And thank God he's talking about it. I'm going to go fix it before yeah. that problem happens. So they go, and so repeatedly the, the, the testimonials come from that I learn more from their session yeah, yeah. than my own. I thought I was coming to solve this problem. Yeah, the other thing that I've experienced in masterminds in that kind of environment, when somebody gets up and presents the, an overview of their business and here's my biggest challenges right now, I, I have that experience, but sometimes it, it, it gets to the next stage of the experience where I think I know how to solve that and, and I articulate some suggestions for that person's business. Yes. And then in reflecting on what, I've just, what advice I've just given, I think to myself, hang on a minute, I haven't done all those things in my own business. <laughs> Let's write all that down because there's, there's my advice to myself. <laughs> and, yes. It actually, oh, it, I had no idea it was that smart. I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I had to listen so, to myself. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, if somebody else presents the problem that you're actually having, they articulate it in a different way, you, you suddenly come up with an idea that might help solve that problem. And then you think, well, why haven't I done that? Because actually I've got the same problem. So the, similarly, what you do is why this is really good is in any mastermind, what happens is when you have good people, if you gather a group of good people, good things will come out. They don't need you, they don't need me. Mm. Just by the nature of who they are, good things will happen. However, if you want great things to happen, if you want breakthroughs to happen, and if you want those to happen consistently and for majority of the participants, you need structure. You need processes, you need boundaries, you need all of those things for breakthroughs to happen. Because I, I have done, and that's what the thing is, that over the decade, I have created forms, I've created little processes that people have I've copied and I, I have spun so many other masterminds from my own group. I facilitated, facilitate masterminds for other people now as an expert. So when I go there, they go, wow, the productivity, everything has increased. People's participation has increased. Their listening skill has increased. It's not that they didn't have it before. It's just they didn't have a system, a process to do it and in real time. And, and I also, as I was telling you, that my mastermind is a very ROI-centric mastermind, not just an idea-centric mastermind. So I'm always focusing on that what can I do for that person now so that they will, their bank balance will increase. There are many ways you can, things you can measure. Easiest thing to measure is that, hey, has your revenue increased? Has your uh, profitability increased? Has your expenses reduced? So you can really measure it from, from those perspectives. And this joint venture, I'm known as the joint venture king. I just figure out of these people, is that when some when you talk who else what else can i do with this person like neil and i are doing joint venture right now from mm. the um boat from our mastermind at sea right this minute we're in a uh, joint venture and that's what actually he was calling to update me on what the status is and what's the revenue potential is and what the how we're going to share it and that the genesis of that was at the at the mastermind at sea and I have processes in place for people. And in writing that one mastermind, there were 241 joint ventures. Potentials were created in writing. Not just, oh yeah, in writing. And so I can track it. Hmm. And, and so this is, that's how they monetize 
at least my group, we prioritize it that how many permutation combinations can you do? And not just within the group. If I, Neil came to me, I mean, your example of Neil, because we know him, it's, there were like roughly 84 people on, on last year's mastermind. It's not that I only know 80, 83 people. I know people beyond the 84. Yeah, yeah. So if, if Neil is telling me who he is and what he needs, his best mastermind or joint venture partners may be outside of the, the group who couldn't make it this year. So I connect with them because I have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize Neil for his participation, for his investment. Mm. And so it is mind blowing how exponential growth can happen. You are one, you're one connection away from your next six figure, next seven figure joint venture deal. And that's my thing in my mastermind. I try to cultivate with people and not a metaphorical or hearsay. We track those and measure it and in numbers. Great. Well, you've made a very powerful case there for mastermind and certainly a good mastermind. And I love that, you know, you've got that very clear service mindset there is how can how can I serve each member of the mastermind? Yes. I'd, um, I'd like to explore with you kind of the structure of the masterminds a little bit more and some of your processes. But before we do that, I want to come back to something you said early on in our conversation, and that was inevitability thinking uh, rather than, you know, positive thinking. Um, you know, I think positive thinking is, you know, much maligned because we kind of are encouraged to think everything's going to be all right and so on, which you know, may well be the case, but it's not going to be all right if we sit on our hands and don't take action. So I'd, I'd like to understand what you mean by inevitability thinking some more. And I suspect there might be a, a core element there of taking action and taking the right action in that. Certainly positive thinking is better than negative thinking. <laughs> so, so, so right there, there is the power, there is power. The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. It's a cl the classic book. It's like Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't, uh, your listeners haven't read these classics, then go read Think and Grow Rich as a foundation. Give it to your ch children. And then The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. These are classic. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, Tony Robbins, Unlimited Power, or Awaken the Giant Within. These are just foundational. Uh, you, you cannot not learn. And then advanced thinking from beyond positive thinking is the concept of inevitability thinking. Inevitability thinking, the truth is you do that. Your listeners do inevitability thinking, but perhaps not in apply in business as much as they apply in their day-to-day -day life. As I say, that if you... Um, the as the name suggests, inevitability thinking is the thinking that makes the outcome inevitable. It's a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen. And the reason it's going to happen is because you've set up conditions along the way for it to happen. So positive thinking is not going to make those changes because our habits, we are trying to change a habit. We're trying to change us. And let's take an example of, uh, you want to go to the gym. You set up a new, you're going to uh, lose weight. You're going to get fit and you want to go to the gym. And you and I both know the statistic that the, all the gyms, they make all of their money in January. December. <laughs> so, because that's a... <laughs> People sign up for a year's subscription and then they... <laughs> yes. yes. So the number one goal for US and, and people ask, guess what? The number one goal is to lose weight. Mm. <laughs> That's it's very New uh, Year's resolution. Yeah. New Year's resolution is to lose weight. That means that they have excess weight. They eat too much. And the third world countries, they don't have enough to eat. Mm. And so they, they want to get rid of it. And those who want to lose weight, that means, of course, part of the thing is I'm going to join join a gym. First three weeks. There's no room. Yeah, there's a two, that's why there's a sign everywhere, 20 minute limit for your 30 minute limit for the, for the treadmill and stuff. Please let someone use. By the third week, they're back to empty again. Hmm. Third weeks, it's empty again. And 
and they paid for the whole year subscription. <laughs> so, so here is the statistic that people who buy a membership, over 90, 95% of them quit. And that's somewhere along the first three months. But those who hire a personal trainer, 95% of, of them stick with it. Why is that? That's an example of an inevitability thinking because there's a fundamental human fact that you and I will do more for others than we'll ever do for ourselves. Mm. So take advantage of that because if you set up, and especially if it's painful, that that person, that trainer gets paid $60 an hour, $100 an hour to beat you up. So <laughs> things that you can do by yourself, but you set an appointment just like your, like today I was there because we set up a time last time we spoke. So I, I set an alarm. I set everything my, so that I want to be here on time and everything else, because it's not, I'm talking to someone else. It's someone else that I respect. So I want to respect their time. Similarly, that when you, set up that personal development with the trainer at the time, chance of you showing up, because if you don't show up, somebody listen to this, oh yeah, easy for you, you can afford personal trainer, I can't. No, that's an excuse right there. It's what you do is find a buddy, find a buddy. Your goal is to get to the gym. You will, you and I, let's say an example, we live in um, nearby and we said, okay, we're gonna go to the gym. And the inevitability, positive thinking is, yes, I'm going to get up tomorrow and go to the gym. That's positive thinking. Inevitability thinking is you will come and pick me up. The next day, I will go and pick you up and we will go. Mm. So that is inevitability thinking. And you give each other permission. When I come, if you're asleep, you can do whatever it takes to wake me up, including the jug of water. <laughs> so we give each other permission and that do so i may not want to get up i'm tired i had a late night all the excuses oh man i had a big things to you my doesn't matter you said you're gonna go at six o'clock six o'clock comes my buddy shows up it's time and we used to say by the way it's, it's, i'm giving you a real life example i have given him permission to honk and I am deathly afraid my neighbors are going to wake up. So Thank they're going to say, what yeah. is wrong with you? And so, <laughs> so I will wake up before he hugs so that I don't have to hear it from my neighbor. So, yeah. and, he, and he can honk as loud, as much as he wants until I show up at the, in the car. So he, mm. he can continuously honk. So we give each other permission. And that's an example of inevit inevitability thinking or in a simpler way, that how many times have you done this, that tomorrow you have a very important business meeting and you have a very important document that you have to take to the meeting. I mean, this is critical. And then you get up and you rush it and you forgot that document. Mm. It has happened to us, all of them. Inevitability thinking is the night before you take your car keys and put the document on top of the car keys or to put the car keys underneath it, and right, it's hanging. You can see the key, key chain, it's there. So you cannot. So when you go and you, it's right there, you have to take the key, then you go, oh, here's a document. Or you take that document and put it in your briefcase. Hmm. And you put the briefcase in your car the night before. So that's inevitability thinking that the document is going to show up, whether you positive, whether you forget it or not. Yeah, you just yeah. the element of inevitability thinking. So similarly, the, the, your, uh, in business, when you have set up your goal, what are the smaller milestones along the way? Because a big milestone has smaller milestones. So the big milestone is nothing without the smaller milestones. And you go along the way and do those. And then before you know it, you add up those smaller milestones 
you've already achieved your bigger milestone and it's inevitable whatever you want to go whatever you want to achieve and you create your team and it's there yeah yeah i love i love those examples and i love how you tied it back to breaking down big milestones into small ones in fact I, it it was highlighted to me yesterday i sort of at the end of the day i was lacking a little bit of energy i wanted to i sort of set myself another hour to do some tasks but i was lacking a little bit of energy and motivation and i kind of thought oh well i'll just put these off to tomorrow but of course i felt guilty about that as well and i thought well, what's what's the smallest thing i can do on this task to so that tomorrow there's actually less to do and i identified a couple of things and i did three of those small things and now everything's done except for just recording so it's a recording of of an intro to a podcast and so now everything's done except just the recording which is only going to take me five minutes this morning i'll, but, I'll give you the real life current inevitability thinking for me i am lazy like the next guy i am a lazy sop if you give me the chance i will just slack off and i want to do things fine anything to avoid so what I do is, my, I have actually, I was telling that I met more great people in the last eight weeks than the previous eight months. When COVID hit, I've been, I've been going to office every single day, seven days a week. My, my office building is next door. And, and I have never been closed for COVID to this day. And I tell anyone that, look, if you're not afraid of COVID, you can come in. If not, we'll do by Zoom. And every day I've hired an additional person to set up all these calls with me. So every hour, every day, there's three, four new people that I, I am meeting and I am absolutely no, just like we had a conversation and this result of this, we were not trying to sell each other anything. I said, because of course I targeted you so that somebody intellectual, somebody I respect, somebody has a successful. So I already know about you then I want to have an intellectual conversation and see if there's an intersection. Here's what I do. I want to know what is it that you do. I want to know what is your superpower. And then let's see, how can we serve each other? That's the basis of my meeting. And I would rather do something else, but because of all of these calls, there are days I didn't want to do anything, but it's not possible not to do anything because those conditions are set. And then when I have this one meeting, it's not the end of the one meeting. It's a beginning of, hey, send me this, send me that. You send me this. Let's talk about doing this and other things. And I will not. I have to send a thank you note. So all of those actions that I have to do, I cannot not do because, as I said, I'll do more for you than I'll do for myself, <laughs> including, yeah. including food. I don't like to cook for myself, but I will invite others and I will cook. Yeah. <laughs> and if it was just me, I'd rather ah, just open a can. I'm just as lazy as the next guy. I will take the easy pan. But mm -hmm. when I invite, I invite, I love to invite people for breakfast because that gets me up early. Yeah. I, I had my first interview today at 7 a.m. my time. And I was up around five, you know, and um, five thirty or so because normally I'm up at six thirty, but because that's seven, I had to be five thirty because I wanted to be showered, ready, and I listened to just like you are. You are so organized. You gave me everything about your uh, this podcast, so read through it and thought about what 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 I'm going to say. Are there anything changes? I have done these things a hundred times. I've done over 10,000 professional talks, but I still, I still have butterflies the, the, the day before the interview, the day before the talk. And it's not butterfly because I care. If, I, if you don't have butterflies, first thing is you don't care about it anymore. Yeah. How can I say, and my, my prayer to the Lord is that, please give me the wisdom and use me as a channel to share things with his or her audience, something that will impact their lives now. 
and I don't know what it is, but I hope, and this is why sometimes I'm up, I'm just <laughs> playing with the slides, reorganizing, just the same, the same mastermind thing I've done a million times, but I am playing with it because I care. Mm. So going back to your, the question of, yes, inevitability thinking is all of those things that you just set up conditions along the way for it to happen, that you go, and during this COVID time, I, am I tell people, take one day at a time. Don't set it with nothing. And one of, I'm a big, big quote guy because I collect quotes because it inspires me. And because the nature of my, and who we are, we are always want to achieve this, achieve that result. I completely, one quote helped me to refocus myself and it said that don't measure your success today by the um, fruits you sort of create, but by the seeds that you plant. So mm. I'm measuring it's how many seeds of success I have planted. I have no agenda and organically the seeds are growing. Yeah. And their own time. So I'm just, all of a sudden, the stress factor is gone. And organically, results are producing. I am busier than I was before. Not just busy, meaning, meaning um, really productive, busy. I've, in one of my businesses, we had our highest month ever in April. And I have another business that is not only down, it's non existent because that's a live event business. So, so that created some vacuum because that business is non-existent that created some vacuum and an idle brain is devil's workshop. And that idle brain is what I, what I, my goal at the very beginning of COVID was if I don't fill this with productive things, I will be, it will be a devil's workshop. So I go set up these meetings with intellectual people and have intellectual conversations. And I, I really mean it when I say that I've met some really awesome people. And I've set multiple hour, two hour block to talk to those people. Of course, those are few and far between. My, and I am, right now, my assistant has shortened my, my introductory meeting from 30 minutes to 20 minutes. Because I, I've become better in 20 minutes. I want to figure out, is there a spark? Is there a connection? Is there something that we can take it? If not, I want to be off, the, off with them for 20 minutes and then give those extra minutes to someone that I am resonating with. And, and, and funny thing is, one of my um, life or criteria for doing joint ventures, because I can do so many joint ventures. You have a small, really group, clickish group we have come up with a criteria for doing joint ventures or business with someone else. The question that we ask ourselves is, do I want to go on a vacation with this person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the answer is no, then get off as soon as you can, do as minimal as you can. If the answer is yes, I want to go on a vacation, which you're telling me that I love this guy, that there's, <laughs> he's, he's so much fun. She's so much fun. I want to figure out a way to spend more, more time with this person. So mm. that's why when people come to my mastermind, I say your number one goal, your number one goal is to build quality relationships. Yeah, yeah. And less you talk business, the more you, more fun you have, the more business you'll end up doing. And that's, that's, that's the under, I said, this is my 11th year doing my, <laughs> this is my 11th year. And I said, this is the wisdom of, um, all these years I've seen, please, the greatest gift, the greatest gift you can give to anyone else is your true authentic self. Yeah. I love that you say, you know, would you take a vacation with them? Because we, we have this um, exercise where we start our whole marketing journey with our clients in let's identify your ideal client. And, and one of the things I talk about is, you know, your ideal client is the person who you would be perfectly happy to be stranded on a desert island with with nothing else there 
um, because you like their company so much. <laughs> That's where we'll start. <laughs> and then, That's yes, we'll there's start. a whole lot of other attributes that 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 person should have to be your ideal client, but that, that's a key one. The, the good news is because my mastermind is invitation only and I'm already, uh, it's invitation and application. So I know a lot about these people already so that the mm -hmm. mindset that they come, what are they bringing to the table for others? So everyone qualifies to do a joint venture, everything to begin with, but not everyone is the same, have the same values, fun, and everything else, or their lifestyle, what they do. They're not single, they're, they're, their kids are this. They don't have that much flexibility that others do. Mm. You look at those things and see, hey, um, and I tell people that my flagship event is the mastermind at sea. There's strictly limited to 100, no more. So, and I said, you don't need 99 connections you need half a dozen that's it yeah. and the key the key and for seven days the key is to find out which half a dozen of this group that you should go deeper so i have processes that i run through within the very first day so that you can identify which of the dozen or so that you need to go and these are designed for half vacation half session hmm. all my mastermind I have become a lifestyle entrepreneur. I no longer do, I was telling you that I had a two-day mastermind. When I started, yes, I had a big mansion. I would, people would fly in and they would uh, stay there and 38,000 square foot mansion so they can have plenty of room to play for two days and then they leave. But now what I do, my first criteria is I must create an unforgettable experience. I must create and that you're gonna be a card carrying member of this unique experience that very few people on the planet have experienced. So yeah. I, I take a small group of 15, 20 people and we like we went to Italy, went to uh, China, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Macau, went to New Zealand, went to Bangladesh, that's from where I'm from. So when we go to these countries, of course, every country I go to, I have a local host. What do I know about China? What do I know about mm. New Zealand? So I always have a co-host and my instruction to the co-host, first thing is, for example, my co-host in Italy, of course, Italy has so many touristy things to do. Mm. And if somebody hasn't been there, and so first when she gave me, what can we do? I looked at it, I said, no, no, no. Here's my first criteria to you. If a tourist can do it, then I don't want to do it. If People are not paying me $25,000 per person to be a tour guide. Yeah. They can do it on their own. That's right. If you do something that's touristy, there has to be a plus one. For example, we, we went to the Vatican. Of course, if you're in Italy, you go to the Vatican. You're in Rome. But, oh my God, she has been, um, she was awarded by the Pope John Paul II and twice. So she has connection the number three papal staff that got us to the private quarters of the Pope, mm. to, the, to the balcony of the Pope, to the, literally the sofa, when the white smoke comes out and the first place that they sit, and we went to the Pope's vestry, which is his, literally his closet. We opened the closet and took all the things, what, the Pope hasn't even been there because he has people to go there and get it. So we went and looked at amazing artifacts. The people go to Sistine Chapel. Of course, we went to Sistine Chapel, but we also went to the Pope's private chapel that mm -hmm. nobody gets to go. So that's what I mean by a plus one. And so I want to give you, I want to prove to my people that relationship capital is more powerful than financial capital. That when we went to Italy, when we went to Lamborghini, anybody can go to Lamborghini. But when we went to Lamborghini, Tonino Lamborghini himself greeted us. Mm. <laughs> Tonino Lam we heard about, we learned about Lamborghini from Mr. Lamborghini. Yeah. We, had, we stayed with Salvatore Ferragamo in his five-star medieval castle, uh, medieval village, and drank his private reserve wine sat down with him and 
you know, they had a discussion. Of course, everything had photo op. I'm telling you not for anything, but I'm giving you ideas on what you can do for your mastermind and things that I have a full-time videographer and a photographer that they're snapping, they're capturing all of these moments that when you were with at the end of Vatican, uh, you're at the, um, with Ferragamo, you're with Lamborghini, you're, we went to the Italian parliament and spoke there. One of the things that because we're speaker author, I want to make them an international celebrity speaker. So I create speaking opportunities in those countries. So that means you have and video clips of those. We, of course, we went to Dubai and one time and it's incredible. And then we create sizzle reels. We create your social media feed and they're looking at, wow, you are with who? You're with Ferragamo, you're with Lamborghini and you're, you're in the car, you've got. So all of those things give you a leg up in your perception on your marketing. I want to give you a, as a result, that's how you monetize. And that's why I was telling you at the beginning, I'm a very ROI-centric mastermind, not an idea-centric mastermind. And of yeah. course, throughout these seven days, we're seeing have, having fun is, a, is already a top of the principle. And then in between, we're putting sessions. Now, the two-day mastermind is spread over seven days. So every day, we don't have to do anything. We can party late and we can just middle of the day have two-hour session, three-hour sessions, and then go do something else fun. Or go, and we, one other thing we always do is we always put on a service project in the mastermind now mm. so that we give. And, yeah. I, and second thing, we always talk to students. So we want to impact the next generation. Yeah, so I love that we as well. Business, so. Yeah, we go to the business crowd. Like, mm. Yeah. Two I levels think, of service, yeah. Two levels of service. I tell the business people that, you know, you guys are lost cause. Give me your kids. <laughs> 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 you guys are lost God. let me get them before the corporations do yeah, and, yeah. and uh, totally mess, it, mess their heads up let me catch them before they tell you I was speaking at an MBA class and literally got to look I learned more from this your session than one year of MBA because everybody gave a real life what they can do and they, the students were like couldn't write fast enough mm. so really satisfying so they come back or when we go to Bangladesh, I take him to my village. And that the, I take him to my school that my father built in, in the village. And I make everyone take class. Mm. We have a translator yes. and they have to play right. with the kids here. Yeah. <laughs> they, they bring, and I, I tell them, you take, when you come to Bangladesh, bring two suitcases. One is your clothing. Another one is gifts for the children. Mm. And go in the class and just full and with both hands, just keep thro start throwing Oh my God, I have, I've given them five-star experience in Bangladesh. They come back, all they talk about is the village. And I'm talking about village, it's, there's no proper sanitation. There's the you know, broken this, broken that. And they go, oh my God, that day changed my life. How come mm -hmm. these kids are so happy? And, yeah. and we have so much and we're always complaining. So yeah. I create those experiences. So the bonding, the relationship is a lifetime bond. That's why Neil and I, we've spent countless hours, we in the morning, connecting with each other. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. There's so, so much to learn there from how you structure the masterminds. And I think you encapsulate the whole thing in what you said there, providing an exceptional experience that's life-changing. Yeah. And, and builds those relationships for life. Yeah. So thanks for that. I, I think it's, you know, I'm aware of the time. I think it's a good point to move on to the innovation round, the buzz round, which is uh, designed to help our, our listener who's primarily all the listeners are innovators and leaders in their field. So I've got five questions I'm going to ask you and hopefully you'll give us some really snappy tips today and inspire our listener to go and do something awesome as a result. So what do you think the number one thing anyone needs to to do to be more innovative? Number one thing innovative is go to read magazines, read something that has nothing to do with your chosen profession, something completely different. So that I, I have two kinds of mastermind. One is all, they're all real estate investors. They're all doctors. They're all one profession. Those are easy masterminds for ROI. 
But if you want innovation to happen, then go to a mastermind where have the different professions because you learn something completely new. The how do they do from their perspective? And then you go, how does it apply to mine? And that's mm -hmm. where you're, you know, I believe that innovation will happen when you cross pollinate. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And sometimes things that one field or one kind of um, group of people takes for absolute mundane and um, easy can be totally new and transformative in another area. Yeah. So if you're, we're all real estate investors, we all know, we go to the same water cooler, so we know that the same thing happens. And, but if you want something unique, you go to another completely different industry, and if you can bring that to your, no one else in the real estate industry will even think of copying that because they, can't, they don't think like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what takes you leapfrog your competition. You're not incremental. You will totally set yourself apart in your business if you do outside, like you're saying, that you, you need to go broaden your thinking and you're mm. like an elastic, just you stretch it. Great. All right. Now, what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? What's, one more time. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? My mastermind. <laughs> I, really, thought you might say is, that. Yeah, I thought really, you might say that, but I didn't want to preempt it. <laughs> I, I, I pinch myself. You're, I pinch myself when I sit, facilitate this mastermind and the caliber of people in the room, I go, man, I love, uh, Jim Rohn had a saying, Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins' mentor. And I'm, I was, he passed away. I was sitting at a Jim Rohn seminar and he is, I, I was writing, cannot write fast enough. And he's just writing and he's talking. And all of a sudden he stops next to me. He goes, good stuff, ain't it? I said, yes. He goes, I know I should have charged myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I feel in my mastermind that, wow, these people are paying me to be here. And I mean, I should have paid because I'm doing all of these things. But that's the beauty of it. It's you, when you get to organize, then you get to attend. And this yeah. is, by the way, it's my criteria today because as I say, I'm, I'm an experienced junkie. I am totally, it's one thing I haven't done a mastermind in Australia. So I met someone and I in, in Sydney, I'm looking for a co-host. So I go, where have I not been in the world? I want to go there. I want to get paid to go there. I want to create value to go there. I want to make a difference while I'm there. So all these criteria I have, that's how I go to a new place now. And I go there a week early or I stay a week late and I have my vacation paid for yeah. by the session. Yeah, I love it. All right, do you have a favorite resource that you use most often? My favorite resource that I use most often. And right now, I, I would say that is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And if you, I, I spoke into so many groups today, even including my conversation today. And what I see is that most people, small business entrepreneurs, they, they're relying on referrals and word of mouth advertising. They are the best. There's nothing better than referral or word of mouth. However, if you don't have a predictable and consistent lead generating flow, you don't have a business. Predictable, consistent, and scalable. These are the three words that I use. That do you have a system that is predict, not just consistent, it's also predictable, then it can be scalable. So you do this, you can predict what will happen. And right now, I have uh, you know, Facebook, social media, LinkedIn has produced the best results, so I have doubled down on LinkedIn. And also, during this COVID, another trend is everybody's going online for marketing. That's because they're saying everything is online. And when people zig, you zag. Yeah. June 1st, I, the last four months in April, I was telling you that April, we had the highest month. So I redid my entire marketing in May, and created a new campaign. And I, June 1st, I started a direct mail campaign. Hmm. Went completely offline. And this... Because I can no longer, I'm, it's like a wedding-like invitation, very um, 
classy, high powered. So when they had the invitation, I said, I'm inviting you to a virtual luncheon. And guess what? Because I, it's a virtual luncheon, I'm adding an Uber Eats certificate. Mm. <laughs> so I am telling them, look, I want to spend the money. Lunch is on me. Here's your Uber Eats. Sorry, the world's environment is such, I cannot be there, but at least allow me to send you an Uber Eats $50 gift certificate. Will you please come and join me? Mm. So I am, of course, I just, the mail dropped June 1st. So I'm waiting for it, it June 7th to June 14th is when the mail is going to hit. That's my online, uh, offline marketing, and I'm supplementing it with online marketing. The online marketing started last week in May with Facebook opt-in. So that same target, I've hired a data scientist, and it just so happens that my data scientist is from Melbourne, Australia. Mm. And, and he and a completely new team revamped the marketing, and so he sliced and diced and got me the most targeted avatar, targeted uh, audience for me, and then I'm doing direct mail, but previous to direct mail, I'm doing online campaign so that it's same uh, branding. So when they get the card, they go, oh, I've seen this. Hmm. And these days in the United States, when you mail a direct mail, the United States post office sends them an email that, hey, you have a mail coming. Okay. <laughs> so, but what that does to us is when they open that email, that's my chance for pixel and do some retargeting. Hmm. So then I get to, I know how many have opened, all the open rates and everything else, even with snail mail, I know. Hmm. And we're doing this retargeting. And I'm betting on that this will be the most successful campaign right now because nobody's doing direct mail. I will stick out when I get, yeah. that's one of the only few mail that they're yeah. going to get. So they're going to respond. Hmm. I love it. Yeah. Great idea. Okay. Now we have talked about this a little bit. What's the best way to keep a client on track? We have accountability. This is the, the key. Remember I, I saying that I'm a very ROI centric mastermind mm. is at the last day of the mastermind, we make everyone. And I said, look, this has been a great, we have we built relationships. We have done, have fun, but I don't want it to be just a fun event. I want it to be something measurable. So as a result of this, you've heard new content, new ideas from other people. Other people have given you ideas about to solve your problem. And so what is your target? And by the way, another concept that um, we talk about is no longer goal setting. There is value in goal setting. I'm talking about long-term goal setting that, hey, one year, five year, 10 year. What we talk about is power play. Power play is what can you do in the next 30, 60, 90 days hmm. that will produce results, that will move the needle, that will take you to the next level and in, in the power play. So these people, we ask them, what you tell me, not your one year goal, what is your, and if you have a one year goal, then what is the, remember I talked about the inevitability thinking, what is yeah. the smaller goal of the 30 day um, landmark and 60 day, 90 mm. day, and then the question that we ask, accountability, we have in a whole accountability form is um, my mentor, Tony Robbins, talks about the principle of PPP, the PPP, the pain pleasure principle. Anything you want, everything you and I do as human beings, we do either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. So let's, instead of one or the other, and most people, because we are, as human beings, we are wired to avoid pain. You only get your hand burned, put you on the hot stove one time. You know? mm. <laughs> so it is painful. So you learn. And why not do both? Pain and pleasure. So we ask accountability is, if you don't achieve this, what is the pain? And if you do achieve it, what is the pleasure? And we make them write those pain pleasure. Remember, the, we talk about the inevitability example that, hey, if I don't wake up, you can honk, you can pour yeah. water on me. So that's the pain side of that. And so we ask them accountability is that, what is it that you're going to do? And this is amazing. 
that people will come up with the pain. Look, I have my vacation set with my family for next month. If I don't achieve it, I have to cancel my vacation. And I'm telling you, my kids are so looking forward to this. They'll probably kill me if I do, but I don't. The question is that you're going to achieve it. What difference does it make? What the penalty is? Like I'm in, I'm in the real estate investing. <laughs> I'll give an example that I have, people have late fees of $25 for rent is late. My late fee is $100. So I go, I used to have, I have my people, property managers to do that now. So first, first day when they sit down, I tell them that, hey, listen, that you, my late fee is $100. They go, what, your late fee is $100? And I said, why, are you planning to be late? <laughs> Yeah. Are you planning to be late? Well, if you're not going to be late, it doesn't matter what the penalty is. Hmm. So that similar thing that are you, are you serious about achieving your goal or are you just telling me? And that's why you set up. And if some of them, because it's a mastermind, if some people say, hey, what are you going to be? Oh, I'm going to donate thousand dollars to this charity. Hey, that's not really a pain. Because number one, it's a shared good cause and you're gonna get some really feel good. So we wanna make it somewhat painful Said, okay, if that's gonna be, you're gonna play some games with us. So they gave us permission, so here's what you get. Oh, you're a Republic. Oh, this is, I find out that he's a staunch Republican and in the US context. Here's what you're going to do. If you don't achieve it, you have to donate thousand dollar to the Democratic campaign. <laughs> <laughs> they would rather die. <laughs> <laughs> then give that money to the Democrats. So that's why we, we create this pain pleasure principle. And then second thing is I pair up, pair them up with a buddy. Hmm. First is okay. consequence. So you ask, what is the accountability? First is consequence. Second is an accountability buddy. And if you really want to take it to the next level, you create a triangle like accountability buddy not accountability buddy of I do you and you do you. I hold you accountable, you hold me No, that doesn't work. You create a triangle, meaning I am only responsible to hold you accountable to what you say you're going to do, but you don't, you're not the person holding me accountable because what happens is that, oh, let's say example of that, I'll wake you up in the morning to take you and one day, I called you say, and I'm a little tired. Say, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Then I'll, I'll give you, I'll cut you slack next yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Because it's, it becomes a tit for tat. Mm. No, here you've only one responsible. I am the drill sergeant. I just hold you accountable. You don't even know what my goals are because I'm telling you to the person who I'm accountable for. Mm. So you don't even, you don't have any leverage on me. So we create a triangular, uh, person. I'm responsible to you. You're responsible to the points. They're responsible to me. Yeah. So this yeah. Is a, a, these are advanced Love things. It. And it mm. came as a result. By the way, guess how I learned this. Someone in the mastermind group created that. Yeah. I just implemented <laughs> it. Yeah. And yeah. now across the board. Beautiful. I'm, mm. Yes. I'm not the smartest guy. I just hang around <laughs> with smarter people. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Well, what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? First is, I would say that I told you to start with, is be your authentic self. Mm. So you be authentic and true to yourself, and you'll see amazing. Um, I had a, an NSA speaker. I, I heard him. He was the president of NSA. And as a speaker, you go, you go to NSA, and you hear something, you want to copy it. The tendency, oh, that is so good. I want to I swipe it. And he said, come be inspired to create, not imitate. Yeah. Come be inspired to create, not imitate. And the first, because we are lazy, we're lazy so that our easy thing is to copy, but you need to think. And I was speaking today to this uh, new friend of mine, and he's the author of a book called Paid to Think. Paid to Think. And we are hitting it off in so many ways that we were on our third two hour meetings um, in two weeks. We're gonna do something. And the truth is, 
that only 2% of the people think. 3% think that they think, but they do memory management. Memory management is not thinking, and the other 95% would rather die than think. <laughs> so that intellectual, that's why the think is one of the most powerful concepts. So if you want to, if you really think, you'll come out and you will separate. And of course, I read every day input. Output is a function of input. Mm. So what you, what you input and will result in what the output is. And if you don't have new things, new ideas, new things, you're constantly coming in as my mastermind and I'm reading books. The two books that I'm reading right now, one is, uh, I'll, I'll give your audience uh, this thing so that this, this is called, first one is by Tim Grover, Relentless, From Good to Great to Unstoppable. Relentless, the, like Lexus, they, their tagline is Relentless Pursuit of Perfection. Perfection is not even achievable, but the relentless pursuit of mm -hmm. perfection. So from good to great to unstoppable, and the second book is called Play Bigger. Play Bigger, How Pirates, Dreamers, and Innovators Create and Dominate Markets. So there's your innovator. <laughs> Play right. Bigger, How Pirates, Dreamers, and Innovators Create and Dominate Markets. And I'll give you another uh, tip over here, is there's not enough time to read all the books. I am now big, fan of book summaries only nowadays i will before when i somebody recommends a book first thing i do is go to the book summary because some people have just read through the book and brought the nuggets for me and i'm a big audiobook person and but audiobook is even three four five hours um, seven hours long audiobook two things is I listen at double the speed. Second, there's also a book company that do audiobook summary, not just the uh, written version. Have you heard of an app called Blinkist? Oh, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Blinkist. I had them go. on the podcast before they, just as they were launching, and I've been a subscriber to them ever since. So, yeah, absolutely. I would, I would encourage everybody to check out Blinkist because, as you say, you get... Um, a book summary that and that's where the name comes from that you can consume in a blink effectively yep. and mm -hmm. they have audio summaries as well so yeah so great tip blink is on average i i go through three to four books a day hmm. so that's the only way and my favorite time is when i'm working out so that i'm always i literally in, in between sets i stop and my phone i take notes is this something I, I, oh my God, this, and I have folders on my phone now and I, I start putting things and then I trans, uh, transfer it from there because I am so much, I'm just pumping iron and doing things in between. My intellectually, I'm stimulating myself. The greatest benefit for physical exercise is not physical, it's mental. Hmm. It right. keeps, that's one of the reasons I, I yeah. go and it keeps me mentally sharp. So it used to be, of course, I listened to audiobooks and, and podcasts and things, but lately it's been Blinkist. And even Blinkist, it's a 15, 10, 15 minute summary. I listen to it at twice the speed. Yeah. So I can even cover more ground. That's exactly. how you buy time. It's, mm. I can never listen to anything today at the same speed in anything. Just if they don't have the player, by the way, there's another tip is, like Vimeo videos don't have the speed control. Hmm. YouTube videos have the play speed control. There's a Chrome extension you can put in on your browser that will take any video and it puts the superimposes the speed control. So without that, I, I would not even listen <laughs> because <laughs> I go yeah, yeah. in my and we'll, have, we'll have a link to a couple of those in the show notes as well because that's a, a really great tip as well. I, I've been doing that for quite some time. Yes. All right. Well, thanks, Roger. This has been really great. Now, where can people find out a little bit more about your work and your speeches and um, perhaps even about the mastermind and then reach out and say thank you for what you've shared with us today? 
Easy, easiest way is go to, if they want to reach out to me, go to Roger Salam. My last name, S is in Sam, A-L-A-M-R-O-G-E-R, rogersalam.biz, B-I-Z. And you'll see my, that's my digital way to get in touch with me. And if they want some gifts with no strings attached, some more gifts, go to rogersvipgift.com. rogersvipgift.com. And they, I designed some key things. And as I was telling you that, I was really thinking that what can I give them that will move the needle? Hmm. Not an ebook. I could, I could have given them, already I had books and stuff. I could give multiple. But I said, let me give you, I created those gifts just for rogersvipgift.com so that with the intent of this, you don't have to even uh, give me emails. Just go there. Great. And, get it. and if you like Wonderful. it, come get more. Yeah. Wonderful. We'll have links to those in the show notes as well. Now, finally, Roger, who would you like me to chat with on a future Nova Buzz podcast and why? Um, I, I always say that <laughs> the law of recency is one of the most powerful laws. <laughs> yeah. law, it, there are so many people and there is one, the person that I'm speaking to right now, uh, his name is David Goldsmith. And, another, and he wrote the book, Paid to Think. And because I spoke to him today, I spoke to him last week, I'm speaking to him tomorrow, and we're on the verge of discussing some joint ventures. And so he is a contrarian. I love contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, am, I go to contrarian right now as to their, what we call, mismatcher. <laughs> yeah. They always have to miss anything. Oh, he and I had heated debates on things just to prove each other's point and in a fun way. And he's, he's a contrarian thinker. So I said, look, here's what I'm sharing with you. Tell me where are the holes in my thinking? Because that's how you enrich me. That tell me on a counterpoint to this. And he's a mismatcher and it comes very naturally to him. And we're doing back and forth. I have a saying that if two people always agree, one is not necessary. Yeah, yeah, so, so, <laughs> I love it. So you, will, your audience will um, really get some value, and we both hit it off. Is that quality of your life is the quality of the questions that you ask yourself and others on a regular basis. I, I wrote a book about that, and I, I said questions are the answers, hmm. and. I convince people without a shadow. That's one of my favorite keynote requests that I get. And I also enjoy doing it. That when you go, people are looking for answers when they should be looking for quality questions to ask. Because the answer is just on the other side of the coin. If yeah. you can ask the right question, and David and I were going back and forth, is, and he's always, and he just hit it up. And then he started telling me all the questions that he has asked. That he goes, <laughs> man, I, I, that's why we hit it up. And I collect questions. You know how people collect things? Hmm. I collect questions. So when I read a book, when I read Blinkist, what stops me on my track is and casually, so I'm going to give you four questions. I'm going to give, I, wait, I have to write down those four questions. I don't care about the <laughs> answers right. because they're giving All right. Me well, we'll, we'll get an introduction to David from you then, and we'll have a conversation with him and we'll see how, how contrarian he likes to get on, on the show. <laughs> Should be fun. Should be fun. Well, thanks so much for sharing your time and your insights with us so generously today, Roger. I've enjoyed this immensely and there's been so much valuable advice here that, you know, can be applied to business across the board. Um, what you can learn from masterminds, some of the th ways you can set up a mastermind that makes it really powerful and um, a lot more there that, that you've given us advice on, you know, how you can get uh, really creative about saving time when reading and watching videos and, and much more. So thanks for all of that. I wish you all the best for the future and let's stay in touch. Thank you. It's a pleasure and privilege. God, good luck and Godspeed. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that engaging and informative conversation with Roger and took something away from his episode. 
I particularly loved Roger's accountability triangle method as one concrete example of inevitability thinking in action. I'm curious to know what you took away from Roger's episode. Leave a comment below the blog post which you can find at innovabiz.co forward slash Roger Salem. That is R-O-G-E-R-S-A-L-A-M. All lowercase, all one word, innovabiz.co forward slash Roger Salem. You'll also find contact information for getting in touch with Roger there, as well as links to the Winner's Circle website, his personal website and his social media pages, and the other resources we spoke about in today's conversation. Roger suggested that we have a conversation with David Goldsmith, author of Paid to Think, on a future Innova Buzz podcast episode. So David... Keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation from us to the Innova Buzz podcast, courtesy of Roger Salem. Tune in again to the next episodes of the Innova Buzz podcast, where we've got more fantastic guests lined up, including book, speak, repeat founder Kerry Heaps and founder of Splashio, Gideon Shelwick. Thanks for listening to this episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show to be reminded of new episodes. It's free to subscribe. Leave a review if you like. Even if you don't like me, I'm okay with that. I'm asking you to leave a review because it helps other people find this show. Go to innovabiz.co to join our marketing transformation community and access a free gift my team and I made for you. It's the Marketing Master Mini Class. We want to give you everything you need to transform your marketing into a human-centered, relationship-focused growth engine. Until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Remember, be awesome and keep innovating.